Hello, this is the first class for the weekday Mariv and Shabbat Mariv service. I'd like to begin by introducing a bit of music to the theory behind Nusach. As you see here, at the top page, labeled scale, there are eight notes that make the melody, rather the motif, of the weekday Mariv service. And it goes as follows. The first five notes divided between a little line there are the notes that essentially make up the Nusach for weekday Mariv. For people who are musically inclined, this would be a C minor scale with a minor second and a major third. In other words, the first note of this scale, which we will call the Havanagila scale, because the motif of the Havanagila is taken from this melody, this motif, it sounds just like this. Hava Nagila, Hava Nagila, Hava Nagila Venismecha. So the first three notes are what really make the characteristic of this scale, the Hava Nagila scale, for our purposes, what it is. So, for example, number one, which we call in the music world a tonic, which is the the beginning note and similarly the end note. It's where we start and where we finish. So the tonic note between the first and the second note has a change and the first and the third note have a change that make it that musical flavor that it has. So again, if this was just a regular minor scale, and for my friends who are not familiar with what a minor scale is, I like to characterize it as a melody that has sad emotions attached to it. So here is a minor scale. This is how it sounds. I'm using the same notes, but changing two and three. Versus So when we get that melody into our head, which is also affectionately called the Jewish scale, uh, we can start to understand how to break down the weekday Mariv service. So as you see here, there are seven total parts to breaking down the Mariv service for which a leader can use for the prayers. The first one is called the call, which has these four notes, which we will talk about in just a moment. The response, and these, the call and the response are often paired together musically in the service, which we will see in future classes. We have section A, section B, the BAA, which is also known as the Baruch Ata Adonai, the intermediate, which when there are prayers that are lengthy, we add this intermediate melody, this motif, to elongate the, the scale in general. And then, of course, our ending. So what we're going to do today, we're going to focus on the call portion of the weekday Mariv Nusach. And on do, I will sing it for you. 
Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Or do, 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 do. There are a lot of ways in which you can improvise and use your own flavors using the foundation of the call motif. So I want to show and introduce you to a couple of places where the call motif can be used within the weekday Mari service. The first one is the Baruchu, the first line where it says reader. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with this prayer book, the Sidur, this is taken from the Sidur Sim Shalom for weekdays, the what we would call the Slim Shalom, the red edition. We're also on page 137. So again, the call motif is this, we can use that call motif to begin our services. We will come back to the Vehu Rachum in just a moment. But for everyone to understand that the call motif will begin as such and the response nicely partners with how the call begins and how it then ends. But let's focus back to Baruchu. So this is how it goes. Again, the motif is now with the Hebrew. Baruchu et Adonai hamvorach. Try it again. Baruchu et Adonai hamvorach. The next part where we, we will also be using the call motif is once we have entered the Shema and its blessings, the Kiryat Shema, a way to conclude this section is at the box. I'd like to add a side note that any time there is a box at any particular prayer, those are usually indicators of the leader saying those sections out loud. Oftentimes, and especially in the weekday Mariv, we begin each prayer quietly with a leader conclusion. So in this case, at the conclusion of the Shema, this is the third paragraph of the Shema, while the leader is waiting for most everyone to conclude their prayers, we would refer back to the call motif to indicate the conclusion. And it goes like this. Adonai Eloheichem Emet. Let's try it together. Adonai Eloheichem Emet. One more time. Adonai Eloheichem Emet. The next service part for which the call motif can be used is within the prayer excuse me of me chamocha so we've just concluded with Adonai Eloheichem Emet as the congregation continues quietly with the following paragraph whether that be in Hebrew or English according to your own personal preference the leader will come back out loud to continue with the prayer at Umal Chuto. At the conclusion of Ve'amru Hulam, the call motif can be used both in the first four words and the continuing four words. This is how it would sound. Mi mocha ba'elim Adonai Mi kamocha nedar ba kodesh. Let's do that again. Mi kamocha ba elim adonai. Mi kamocha nedar ba kodesh. 
there's also an opportunity to share with you something here within the Hebrew. Underneath the word chamocha, similarly with kamocha, as well as ose and fele and bakodesh, you will notice a little line underneath the mem. And in this case, this line here is not a vowel or, as we know in reading Torah, a trope symbol, but rather uh, a symbol that represents what we call a secondary accent, which is called a metig. And typically, roughly 90% of Hebrew words have their accented syllable at the end of the word. So for example, Adonai, Tehilot, Nora, but in other cases where the syllable is accented in the beginning or at the middle of a word, we have this indicator to let us know. So again, the meteg is a secondary accent to bring awareness to the syllable that needs extra care. So in this case, instead of saying mi chamocha, mi chamocha. And it happens to be that it's very typical for somebody who is familiar with a service, whether it's the weekday service or another service, when they come upon the mi chamocha, to naturally bring on that syllable, that accented syllable on the, on the mem. So when we're singing it in the melody as follows, Mi chamocha ba'elim Adonai. Well, that melody is a very traditional in the sense that it has been used for many, many years and used in connection to the what we call the Ashkenazi pronunciation where the stress is usually on the first or second syllable rather than the last syllable as is with the Sephardic pronunciation. Much of the music that we would call traditional tends to put the syllable in a different spot rather than at the end. So again, music helps dictate accent, tropes themselves help dictate accents, and Symbols such as the metig will also help guide the reader and the leader to understanding correct pronunciation. So going back to the call motif, let's try it one more time with the first four words and the next four words. Mi mocha ba'elim Adonai Mi kamocha nedar ba kodesh. Wonderful. Alternatively, one could add that motif, the call motif, to the following line here in bold. Adonaiim loch le'olam va'end. The call motif essentially is the flavor of the, what we're calling the Hava Nagila scale. So to, as a way to get back to that motif, that melody, using the call motif is a great way to center your, your davening in this case. Adonai loch le'olam va'ed. The next part of the service that the call motif can be used is for the Chatzik Kaddish. Again, the call motif is the centering melody for the weekday Mariv Nusach. And so because it usually begins or it has the beginning notes for each section or each prayer, it's appropriate to use the call motif to begin the Chatzik Kaddish for this first paragraph as well as the second paragraph. So here's how it would go. And it's just for these four first words. 
Yitz Gadal Vitz Kadash Sheme Raba. Let's try that again. Yitz Gadal Vitz Kadash Sheme Raba. And as we begin the second paragraph as the leader, what we'll do is that we'll stretch it all the way to Vi'it Nase. Now because the call motif is centered around these four notes, die, 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 when we reach a prayer that is longer than four syllables to add each note, to match, excuse me, each note, it's important to figure out where we make those musical ups and downs. So let me, allow me to illustrate what I mean. Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yipa'ar v'yit roma v'yit So what I've done is that between those four notes, I've stretched the length to each ending of each word. So again, here's the first note. Yitz barach ve'yishta. Now we're going to go up on Bach. Yishta Bach. There's that second note. And hold on to that. Yid pa ar. Ar is that third note. Ve'yit romam ve'yit na. Fourth note. Se. La da 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 Alternatively, you could use the call motif for the congregation and reader response in the middle of the Hatsi Kaddish. And as we were referring to using that motif for more than four syllables in this beginning entrance for the second paragraph, the same thing could be done for this line. This is how I would approach. Yehe shme raba mevarach le alam ul alme almaya. Again, that's the flavor, the essence of the weekday Mariv Nusach. And since it is used several times in the Mariv service, when there are congregational responses, I find it appropriate to use this particular motifs for those responses. Lastly, we turn to the end of the service for Alenu. And as I mentioned before, whenever we see a box whether in this sudor as it's gray filled or a regular blank box, those are our leader entry points. So because the Alena prayer can be done in multiple ways, there are multiple ways in which to approach this entrance, Vene Mar. So one way to approach the Alena prayer in general is to sing it uh, with the affectionate melody that we use on Shabbat. Which is Aleinu le Shabbeach la Adon Hakol la Tekedula le Yotzer Bereshit Shelo Asanu Kegoye ha Adratzot Velo Samanu Kemishbechod ha Adama Shelo Sam Helkenu Kahem Vegor Aleinu Kechol Hamonam Vaanachnu Koreim Umishta Havim Umodim Lifne Melech Malche Hamlachim Hakadosh Baruchu. Now, one option is to chant 
what I just did up until Baruch Hu, to then quietly continue with Shehu no Teshemayim. Option two would be to completely sing as a community or minion the whole top paragraph of Elenu. And lastly, to recite the top paragraph of Elenu quietly with the leader introducing the first couple of words as follows. To then allow the congregation, the minion, to read the Elenu paragraph at their own pace. At the conclusion of the first paragraph, we continue silently with the al kain Lecha paragraph, and we await the leader's entrance with Venet and Mar. So again, there are a couple of options to which we can approach Venet and Mar, one being the pairing melody that we've done traditionally with Alenu, which is... Venemar vehayadonai the melech ala kol haaretz bayom hahu bayom hahu yadonai echad ushmo 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 echad. Option two, uh, our congregation's tradition is uh, using a melody from a cantor uh, named Cantor Stephen Friedman, and this is the melody that we use. Venemar vehaya Adonai Lemelech al kol haaretz Bayom hahu, bayom hahu Bayom hahu yihye Adonai echad Ushemo echad and lastly, option three is now going back to the call motif as the entrance. And what maybe you may have noticed is that there are certain punctuation marks that we use in the English language that are also inserted within Hebrew prayer. One being the colon, another being the comma. Now, while the comma may not use the exact functioning as what we would put it in English language. In this case, it helps us to phrase our prayer lines. So for the call motif, I will begin with the net and mar and drawing it all the way through Haaretz at the comma. Venemar vehaya Adonai lemelech al kol haaretz. Let's try that again, a little slower. Venemar vehaya Adonai le melech al kol haaretz. So, as you can see, we are integrating the flair of the weekday service by using the call motif within the four notes. And our framework is what, for this class's purpose, is called the Havanagila scale. <laughs> Once we begin to practice the different motifs and coming back to the Havanagila scale, your davening sensibilities will become more clear and will allow you to use improvisation in your davening. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we hope to see you for next week's class. Kol Tuv!